let's continue our discussion about classroom, the major topic, classroom implementation. And within this major topic, we've got uh, language teachers and their coping strategies with the hidden curriculum, right? So before we discuss the coping strategies uh, of the teachers in terms of, uh, you know, addressing hidden curriculum in the language classroom, I would just like you to have your perspective. I've got very interesting questions here for you. For example, firstly, what do my students have to do to gain my attention in the classroom or approval? And secondly, what behavior do I reward or punish? Right. Or what behavior do I ignore or snub? So these are these are the questions which intrigue on daily basis the language teachers in the while uh, you know uh, while being present in the classroom, right? And these questions could be you know very much come in the uh, in the domain of hidden curriculum, right? Hidden curriculum got two two perspectives. Bear in mind, it looks at not only the teacher's perspective but also the student's perspective. Although it lays emphasis on, you know, students and their hidden curriculum uh, bringing on the surface, right? Well, uh, the hidden curriculum, as you could remember well in the previous modules, it helps shorten the gap. Uh, gap between official and hidden curriculum. The official curriculum is the imposed or the curriculum which we receive from an institution or from from a ministry or from uh, from external bodies, right? But the hidden curriculum is the curriculum which takes place between students and teachers, and which is a shared knowledge, which is shared concepts, shared notions of learning shared understanding of learning, right? So this is sort of described as a self-reflection and uh, which self-reflection which helps uncover, discuss and analyze the shared knowledge, the shared traits, in other words. Uh, I mean, the behavior elements in the classroom. This is, I mean, how students need to be, uh, you know, seated, shouldn't be, this is not what is mentioned in the official curriculum, but this is very much shared between students, shared sort of considered shared knowledge between teachers and students. And this is how it becomes hidden curriculum, right? As language teachers, we need to be aware of this sensitive issue. And if we look at this uh, from the perspective of teachers, from the, uh, you know, uh, side of teachers, what they need is they need to have continuous in-service training or continuous professional training, how to address hidden curriculum on daily basis. And they need to have, you know, consultation and negotiation with the students, not only with the students, but also with their peers, how other teachers actually, their colleagues actually address this element and how the problems are detected and then solved, right? Well, uh, the hidden element, the hidden curriculum uh, of the, uh, uh, the hidden factor of the curriculum is actually that it sees language learning and teaching as a complex process. I mean, it's not straightforward as it appears to be. Rather, it in involves many psychosocial processes and many, you know, learning habits on the part of uh, students and teaching habits on the part of teachers right so if if for example the hidden curriculum is not addressed or is not properly diagnosed uh, so it could become a real danger for the official curriculum for example uh, the classroom behavior and this is what is between the teacher and the student and this is not what is mentioned in the official curriculum for example, if it's not being resolved between the teacher and the student, how come they could actually implement the official curriculum? So what we need as language teachers, we need to be aware of hidden curriculum. And this is how it's very much seen um, the responsibility of teachers to 
in order to implement official curriculum, we first need to diagnose the elements of hidden curriculum present in the, within the four walls of the language classrooms.